I have been producing worship records for 15 years now. And there's this feeling that it's getting harder to capture something genuine. It's not that there's this magic formula that makes a record feel real. Just make me believe that you believe what you're saying. In 2016, my wife Sally and I made our way to London and documented one such attempt with Danny O'Callaghan. This is the making of the son of my father. years about the right opportunity, the right time, the right place to do it. And then four or five years ago, run into Elijah, meet Elijah on, on a trip as he's touring the UK. I drove him around Manchester and different parts of the UK as he was on the tour with Jonathan Houser. We would just talk for hours about music and about worship and about my heart and about what made me come alive. And. Um, he would ask the right questions and I wouldn't know the answers. And so I went on this journey of trying to find out what those answers were. Uh, I began this process of unfiltering all the things that I'd learned along the way and the boxes that I put myself in. And that was actually a lot harder process than I'd ever imagined it would be. Unlearning and detangling all these mistakes and these things of rejection, these moments of hurt and actually just having the courage to just believe it back myself. I very much saw worship as a, a thing that, in a, a worship in a box, and uh, it's got to be congregational worship, it's got to be song or singing that you do in church. Um, and I hadn't realised that worship could perhaps be something that I am, and I just be myself and, and write songs that make me come alive. I've always had an affinity for using live open sounds in my recordings. So in pre-production, Danny's stories about listening to old U2 records gave me total permission to go down that sonic path again. So we gathered the core band together at Old Chapel Studios in Chichester, England. Rich DeCass, a sick, nasty guitar player and multi-instrumentalist, much fun to work with. John Kyle, mustache extraordinaire and genuinely one of my favorite people I met there. Neil Gillespie, fantastic drummer, can take anything I threw at him. And the owners, Paul and Kathy Burton, who have been a mother and father figure to the worship community there. That spirit saturates the studio and dovetailed brilliantly into Danny's heart for the EP. Being a son and being a father, I think that's been the one major theme of my whole life is that I'm, I'm on this journey of, of, of sonship. Before I'd never just I'd never done the basement because that's where all the tools are and dad's there. You know, now I'm going after it. You know, now I'm in adolescence and I'm just going after the tools. And I'm like, I want to create something, I want to do something. Before where maybe a bit of religion, maybe a bit of my own stuff, has created walls and boundaries around me, particularly in the area of trust. Um, now I'm just feeling like there's the invitation from the father to say, come on, come on. And not just for him, not just him is this this ideology, but also like with people, you know, with fathers in my life. I think I want my music to bring people into a wide open space where, you know, they're either challenged or they're inspired or they're hopeful for the future, where they may be asking them questions they've never asked them before and they're allowing themselves to listen to things they've never heard before. With a week of tracking under our belt, we headed north to the Cotswolds in the home of Penny Lyons and Kevin Washburn for guitar and bass overdubs. 
Their home and studio was a bucolic setting straight out of a Jane Austen novel. Having homemade meals on the back portico with the entire group was a much needed respite between long tracking sessions. Many rooms in the manor also allowed for Neil's wife Karen and Danny's fiance Beth to come join us for those days. She's fully amazing. Um, she's changed my life. She has changed my life completely. She's changed it because she is like my absolute rock. She's been the person that's just championed me to be honest and just go for it. I'm a lover of all things analog and recording along with using real reverbs in all the tracking and mixing phases. So when the vicar of St. Bartholomew's Church of Gloucester offered their church for vocal tracking, we took a ride up to check it out. I think it's safe to say I was blown away. I didn't know it at the time, but this was the church where Danny had proposed to Beth. This church on Chosen Hill was steeped in history and it had a beautiful sound for tracking vocals. Whether there was a church there before or not, is, we're not quite sure, but that church starts from about 1127, I think. And a monk would have been sent up from the abbey in Gloucester and, uh, and he had a little room up the side of the church where he would live and sleep and eat and uh, look after the, uh, the surrounding people. But what I love about that place is the fact that, that they built it on the hill. Uh, now, of course, it's slightly in the wrong place, but then it was a place of Christianizing what probably was a pagan worship site. The idea is that if you occupy the high spaces, then you have influence over the whole area. I've been writing songs since I was real young, but I kind of let go of, let go of a lot of the songs because I just, I didn't feel that I could do it, to be honest. I didn't feel that I'd either be successful in it or people wouldn't like it. And, and even in worship, I, I was writing for a church and um, I was writing whatever people wanted me to write and I wasn't writing what I needed to write and I wasn't writing what was honest to me. Being at the end of the project now, or nearer to the end of the project from where I started, I'm so happy with where it's going and what, what this is the beginning of because it feels genuine and it feels like me um, and it feels like you know it's made me come alive and if it makes me come alive I hope that it will make other people come alive. Every worship album made has a sort of heart signature that's associated with it. Danny's sound is a lot like the prodigal son's signet ring the signature of a father who wants everyone to know that this is his son. This isn't about meeting criteria, this is about reforming what, what worship looks like. And I am passionate about making music that the church loves, but also like 
people without faith, people don't even know who God is, just, they're just like, what is this, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah.